This Week in Post, the On One Perfect Brush Explained. Hi everybody, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to In Post. Today's episode is a Q&A, but it's one question and it's about the perfect brush in On One Photo Raw. Uh, this actually applies to a variety of On One products going back to probably Photo Suite 9. Definitely Photo 10, definitely Photo Raw. So if you're using those products, this is a video for you. If you're not, hey, no hard feelings. Come on back next week. We'll have a different topic. Before I get into today's video, one last thing is if you are an On One user, go ahead and check out my On One Learning Center. Got a bunch of different resources there, a bunch of different videos. A lot of them jump into things I've done in post, but it'll take you right to the spot in the video where I'm showing a technique or showing a tool. And many of those are from Photo 10, but they're perfectly applicable to Photo Raw as well. So check that out. That'll help get you jump started on Photo Raw. So today we're going to talk about the perfect brush. I got a question from Tom in California and he asked, I'm struggling with the perfect brush and trying to be able to get you know, a good edge on a certain you know, photo. And so I thought, well, let me take a step back and explain what the perfect brush is. It's a variety of options. And there's a couple of additional controls that we have that can make or break the usage of it in certain situations. So let's dive in. So to set the stage here, what I've got is I've got this set of colored bands. It's nothing more than a series of color fill layers and I've collapsed them all into a stamped layer, which we have right up here on the top. And so this is, I can show you the basics of how the brush works as well as some of the more advanced color selection features that we have. So very first, the brush is right here. There's our masking brush. The perfect brush we turn on at the very top with this little like little magical looking paintbrush there. So once that is turned blue, we are now using the perfect brush. So what is the perfect brush? It's edge detection in the brush. So you notice that, let me turn off this little guy here. You notice that there is a minus sign in the center of the brush right now because I'm in paint out mode. I can press the X key and it switches to paint in and it turns into a plus. That just tells me am I taking things away or am I adding things? In this case, I want to remove certain things, remove some color. Now, the way that the perfect brush works is whatever color is under the center of your brush that gets sampled and the brush will act on only those colors. So let's pick this middle pinkish colored stripe and I'm going to click, I'm going to actually make my brush really big so we can see what's going on here. I'm going to click once. Now notice that the center stripe is gone, but the other stripes on either side of it haven't been touched. Well, what happened? the paintbrush, the brush sampled this pink and said, okay, that's what you want me to work on. And as long as I keep that minus sign inside that pink bar, I'm not gonna affect anything else around it. If I click and I start to drag and I drag and I drag, and as soon as I hit this next bar over, it's gonna sample again, and now I'm impacting the next bar. So the sampling happens continually. Let me undo that there is a way to tell it to not sample continually. So back to our middle bar there. I'm gonna press and hold the command key on a Mac, it's a control key on a PC. And I hold that down first, now I'm clicking, and now I'm dragging out to the right. And watch when I hit that next band, nothing has happened because with the command key pressed, I told the brush, sample the first color that I click on and don't change anything else. So those are our basic operations. You keep that center of your brush over the color tones that you want to remove, and you can paint anywhere you like, and it's not going to affect other colors around it. If you cross a boundary of color or color tone, the brush will resample, continue doing that. And you can control the sampling, turning it off with that control or command key. Now, if you were incredibly observant during that first part, you'll notice that when I had a very big brush, like I do now, and I was clicking in this bar here and I started wiggling around that there's a bit of a checkerboard pattern showing up underneath this pinkish bar to the left of where I was painting. Well, because these tones are so similar, right? There's a level of this pink color in this richer pinkish magenta color as well. And so that's a challenge for edge detection. It's all based on colors. So if the colors are similar, you can have 
some bleed. Well, uh, what happens if I try to do that command or control click thing? I start wiggling around again. Same thing, right? I'm still sampling the same color. In the gear menu, we have a few options. We have a color threshold slider and a transition slider. I'll hover over that and let the little tool help there go. But really what we're doing here is if we make the color threshold smaller, we're saying be more specific, more granular on the colors to remove or if you're painting in to add. Transition is what's the feather, the fade between the colors that I'm adding or removing. So if you want to get a harder edge, you take your color threshold down really low. Let's get it down to going down to one there. And I'm going to take my transition really low. And that's saying to the tool, give me a very, very hard edge. So now as I wiggle around, I'm not getting that bleed over. Of course, if I click and I drag and I hit that next color, I'm going to resample and things are going to you know, move on from there. But when I have that low color threshold and that low transition, I'm getting a nice crisp hard edge. Okay. Conversely, we take the transition back to the default, which is around, I think it's 90. And let's increase the color threshold. I'm, I don't have to do much. Color threshold is actually quite sensitive. Let me put it to 15. If I click once, you're already seeing some bleed in there. Let's go even higher. 38, sure, that's fine. Click once. Look how much has disappeared. We were, we were telling the tool, all right, yeah, I'm clicking on this pink, but you know what? I want a bunch of pinks, maybe even some reds too. I click once and I'm already getting bleed everywhere. So generally speaking, I keep the color threshold really low. Now the default is four, and that's usually good for most applications. Occasionally, I need to lower that to two or to one. And the transition, uh, again, I normally just keep the defaults, but if I need that hard edge, I'll lower it. It's almost, it's rare that I'm increasing transition or increasing the sliders in general. The last thing I did want to point out is if I even I hit the color threshold really, really high, and let me make my brush really, really big. So it's touching now, the width of this brush is touching every color band. If I click on this pink center, notice everything except the blue was affected. So there is, you know, a level of understanding of color tones, right? I mean, you would expect that from the tool. So I'm not gonna ever affect this blue bar, even if I have that threshold really, really high saying, give me every shade of pink all the way up until red and affect that. Uh, blues, greens, anything else that's significantly different won't ever be affected. So that is how the perfect brush works. And the tip of the week is if you need more control, you need to get a more precise removal or adjustment on a particular color tone, lower the color threshold and lower the transition slider. That's going to give you your preciseness. Again, most of the time, the defaults are pretty good, but we do get scenes where you've got a predominance of a particular color tone or color cast. You might need to go into that gear menu and tweak those controls just a little bit. And that's going to wrap up today's in post episode. Tom, thanks very much for the question. Hope this uh, further solidified the information I sent you in email, and hopefully this helped out some other folks too. If you've got a question, feel free to hit me up. You can contact me through my website, comments on the video. If you've got other stories about how you've used the perfect brush to solve a particular problem, or if there's a combination of color threshold and transition that's working for you, share that. It'd be great to know about it. Uh, you know, that's the whole point. We're all trying to become better photographers and post-processors together. Well, until next time, my name is Scott Davenport and happy shooting. Ah, I do wish I had a nicer picture than colored bars.